I feel mad awkward with this microphone right here. I use my hand, oops, see, I'm already hitting the cord. I use my hands too much, so trying something new. I don't know what the that was. Greetings, good day, and welcome. I'm Deanna, project manager and grants consultant, and today we're gonna talk about effective team management as a project manager. A lot of what I talk about on this channel is inspired by you guys, so if you are someone looking to know more about project management, if you have a specific question about it, anything about grants or development as well, make sure to leave all your questions in the comments below. For now, let's get right into the topic of the day. Before we start talking about how to go about effective team management, I want us to first just understand the basics and I'm going to get into nine specific elements that goes into making sure that you as a project manager whether you are seasoned or you are just stepping into this role or are looking to get into project management I want you to make sure that you have these elements active when you are managing a team and then you know as always wrap up and final thoughts let's dive right in and first talk about what team management really means in the context context of project management. As a project manager, regardless of what industry you are operating in, you want to make sure that you are creating an environment where every team member can perform at their best, contribute down. Bro. Contributing to the project's overall objectives. It involves a lot of communication, leadership skills, problem solving, and operating with a whole lot of empathy. And lastly, I want you to remember that a project manager is not just a boss, but a leader who is guiding their team towards a common goal. Like, yes, you are the one in charge, but you have to make sure that you are not just an authoritative figure over your team, but someone who that they can turn to for support, someone who is able to provide guidance and clarity on whatever project that you're working on and that people are just comfortable who don't want to be in a comfortable safe space which they are working in now it's time for you to grab your notebook grab a pen pencil whatever you want to write with and write down these nine elements that will help you create effective team management huh? First up, and I'm gonna say this until I'm blue in the face, and I know y'all have heard me say it in other videos, but communication is key. Clear, concise, and consistent communication establishes trust, sets expectation, and keeps everyone on the same page. If there's anything that is vital for a project's success, it's to make sure everybody knows what's going on at the same time. You don't want things to be duplicated. You don't want things to get overlooked. So maintaining communication and making sure that everyone in your team is involved and active and actively participating in the project and the process of it, things will go much smoother. For consistent and effective communication, make sure that your style is tailored to fit your team as individuals and collectively. Some people prefer email. Some people might want to jump on a call. Some people might send you a message through Gchat or Slack, but the goal is that there's no surprises. So to avoid surprises, hiccups, missed deadlines, things just f up. Communication, key. Communication is key, get it? Number two, you need to make sure that you are setting clear goals and expectations across your team. If there are no metrics for success, objectives, benchmarks, or milestones that your team should be hitting throughout the process of any project that you're working on, things are not gonna get done. People are not gonna feel effective or that what they're doing is actually making sense or that the work is meaningful or that like, you know, they wanna People want to visibly see what's going on and the benefits that's coming from it. And if these actions are actually contributing to the larger objectives of the project, or if some of the tasks, milestones, benchmarks, and things need to be altered to best tailor to the project. However, if nobody got no expectations to hit or no goals to meet or no metrics to follow, when you're creating goals and expectations for your team, make sure that they are smart, which means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based. And just like people want set goals and expectations to hit, make sure that those goals, as I said, align with the project's objectives. Don't have people just working for the sake of working. Make sure that what they are doing and what they are striving to achieve makes sense to the project at hand. Three is to make sure that you 
you are building and sustaining team morale. I don't remember what video I had mentioned this in, but one of the things that makes my job so rewarding is the feedback that I get from my boss, like from my CEO, president, company, etc., etc. My coworkers and myself, we make sure to, you know, to give somebody a win, to shout somebody out. My boss is, as I said, my biggest cheerleader. She is always like reassuring me and reinforcing the work that I am doing and that I am producing. Getting that feedback lets me know that either A, I'm doing the right thing and going in the right direction and I gotta keep doing this, or I need to make some changes. Let me think about what adjustments could fit better to this project compared to what I'm doing right now. So, you know, I'm doing a better job. But nonetheless, team morale and just building up people and getting that level of like encouragement externally will create the encouragement internally. Make sure that you are celebrating the wins, but also making sure in the times where there's criticism that it's constructive and that you are being supportive with the criticism. You're not just saying like, no, I don't like that, but you're providing more <laughs> that someone can actually use to improve upon whatever it is that they need to improve upon. Supportive, constructive criticism, okay? Okay. And when you're celebrating a win or giving an acknowledgement, it don't have to be some super grand gesture. Like you don't have to buy everybody at your company a brand new like laptop or a phone or device or something. It could be like a gift card. It could simply be a thank you, an acknowledgement in an email, like a company wide shout out. Like I'd be feeling mad good when it, to the executive team, my boss be like, yeah, Deanna did this, this and that. And she's so great and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> Thank you, boys. Thank you. I'm a hyper every time. Not my motherfucking friend. But yeah, take the time to boost your team a little bit. I promise you, it'll make a big difference. Number four, with being part of any team, you're going to want to make sure that you are able to navigate challenges and conflicts. It would be so amazing if everything we worked on and every group that we were a part of did not come with conflicts. And sometimes we are blessed enough to not have to deal with conflicts. However, that is not always the case. That's just the world we live in, reality. In those times where challenges and conflicts arise, it will be on you, project manager, to be the mediator. Make sure that you are addressing all issues promptly and fairly. Try to encourage an open dialogue where people are talking to each other as calm and with as much grace as possible. And don't walk away from any conversation or challenges without having some sort of resolution and that everyone as a team collectively can agree to the resolution, execute the resolution, and are genuinely satisfied with said resolution. And in those instances where it might be impossible to satisfy everyone, it is what it is. Not everybody is always going to be happy all the time and that is something that you will learn to be able to operate with and accept as you just get into those environments. But with enough practice and enough people engagement and management, I'm telling you that will, you will have less of those experiences than you think, I promise. If you've watched my how I got into project management with no experience video, you'll see that I talked a lot about how outside of grants and development and project management work, only other thing I really did for a long time was work at coffee shops and though it was a like I don't know seemed irrelevant job it put me in a space where I was engaging with not just a variety of co-workers or I would say my employees because I was managing them but I also had such a wide range of customers coming into the shop every single day and being able to operate with those people and the challenges and conflicts that they came with so that experience allowed me to to better operate in other settings as a project manager now. So this barista learned a lot and skills. If you've had any customer service type of skills or job in which you work with people, serve people, engage with people, project management and handling conflicts and challenges will probably come to you a lot easier than you think. Five, which is gonna make your job much easier is to make sure you're leveraging technology for team management. Quite honestly, it's 2024 we are in the digital age you not utilizing some sort of 
technology is a, is non-negotiable. Like from project management softwares to communication tools, you will have to utilize some sort of technology within your company, organization, corporization, corporation, corporation, or wherever place you are operating as a project manager to make sure that you have effective team management. Technology can easily streamline workflows, enhance collaboration, and keep your team aligned no matter where they are. My team is literally all over the country. There's some of us in Texas, Alabama, New York, Philly, uh, Delaware, Atlanta. Like we're all on various time zones, various locations and such. So if we didn't have technology, I wouldn't have my job. Dang, and I like my job. Yeah. I think I made my point. So dive into some technology tools, see what works best for you and your team, and don't shy away from any tools or softwares that could revolutionize the way you work. Six, you want to foster a culture of continuous improvement amongst your team. A truly effective team is one that can grow together and is looking to grow together. Fostering a culture of continuous improvement involves things like regular feedback loops, learning from each project and the pros and cons that came with the work that was produced from said project and encouraging professional development. If there's anything that I have loved about the places that I've worked is that they've given me the capacity and space and the funds to grow. They encouraged me to find courses, classes, programmings, conferences that aligned with my growth and my professional and development. And if I wanted it, they paid for it. Now my current job, my boy, she has has been on me about that and I need to do I need to do some digging and some research so I could take advantage of the professional development that they want to offer me so I need to listen to my own advice but my company again they foster a culture of continuous improvement and they're willing to support me to continuously improve so make sure that you too are encouraging your team to find learning opportunities through online courses workshop conferences etc make sure that you are setting aside time for retro perspectives after each project so you guys can just reflect on what went well what didn't go well and what are you going to take into the next project nobody's perfect there is always room for growth so make sure that you are giving yourself and your team the space to grow seven effective team management comes from effective delegation and empowerment you are not only giving tasks to your team and assigning assignments assignments and deadlines and all that other stuff that comes with projects but effective delegation involves matching tasks with team members strength and growth areas and you providing the necessary resources in order for them to do their jobs effectively and trusting them to take ownership of whatever tasks that you have given them this brings me back to my i hate micromanagement video because if you trusted your team and gave them the empowerment to do their job and to trust trust that they were going to get it done, then you know your team would be just much more effective and efficient and move more smoothly. And like I said, project management is not cute. It will never be cute. Don't try to make it cute. And along with aligning tasks to the strength and growth areas of your team members, I also want you to empower them by involving them in the decision making process and giving them the autonomy to find the best path to achieve their goals. If you trust that they can do their job, then allow them to do their job get out the way it's really that simple and involving them in the decision making process just makes them feel even more a part of the team like wow my opinion matters like you want me to contribute to the overall final decisions and success of the project itself like that makes me feel good. And with more confidence and that feel good energy, people just work much better. Number eight, I want you to make sure that you are managing time and resources wisely. Unless you and your team got it like that, time and resources run out. They come to an end. And making sure that you manage them wisely is key to your team's success. Make sure that you are always prioritizing your tasks based on impact and urgency 
and to be realistic that your team can actually achieve the requirements of the project within the given timeline and resources of said project. Make sure you're using charts and boards in order to visualize progress and adjust anything in your project as needed. Effective time and resource management not only keeps your project on track to completion, but in general, it reduces the stress on your team. Project managers are here to manage the project and make sure that it's successful, but we don't always want to put out fires. We don't, we don't like that. So fellow project managers, when you are the head of the team, make sure everybody understands collectively that we don't want to operate with just putting out fires and just being on crunch time with everything. And if we need two to three weeks to complete something, don't always leave it where we have one one week to do it. You know what I mean? Knowing how to manage your time and manage your resources will ultimately create a much healthier and effective work environment. Last and certainly not least, and this can go with any any title out there, but it's to encourage life work balance amongst your team. And I say life work because your life and your team's life should come before the work. Did I stutter? Make sure you are able to recognize signs of burnout and fatigue amongst your team and to proactively address them. I want you to make sure that you are encouraging your team to take some breaks throughout the day, get up, stretch a little bit, go outside, get some fresh air. Don't have anybody sitting in their seat from nine to five. That's crazy. And if somebody has requested time off from work, PTO stands for prepare the others. So if somebody is off work, respect their time and prepare the others. You having a well-rested, balanced team will make them much more creative, much more efficient, and just overall happier. And who does not want to work in an environment where every all the members are happy? And if you're promoting an environment that wants whoever is a part of the team to be healthy and to practice taking a breath, you'll retain top talent and people will want to stay on your team because you think they're humans and you care about them. Don't ever forget that the well-being of your team will determine the well-being of your project. Before we go, let's do a little recap of what it takes to build effective team management as a project manager. We first highlighted the importance of clear, concise, and consistent communication tailored to your team's preference. We talked about using SMART goals to define success and align individual goals with project objectives. We emphasized celebrating wins and providing support to keep the team motivated. We explored how to address conflicts promptly and fairly, turning obstacles into opportunities for growth. We discussed how technology can streamline workflows and enhance collaboration. We encouraged regular feedback, retrospectives, and professional development to grow as a team. We stressed the importance of matching tasks with team members' strengths and providing autonomy. We looked at prioritizing tasks and using tools to manage time and resources effectively. And like Lastly, we talked about the significance of a healthy life-work balance for a team's creativity, efficiency, and overall happiness. Implementing these practices will not only improve your team's performance, but it will create a much more positive and productive work environment, which overall will make your team much more effective. Oh shoot, would you look at that? You made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbyes are a bitch. <laughs> t-shirt idea goodbye stink if you have any tips or experiences to share make sure to drop them in the comments below as i said a lot of these topics are inspired by you guys so if you are somebody who has any questions concerns would like me to dig deeper into anything more specifically just let me know please make sure to like share and subscribe and until next time bye y'all